Hiberno English. Hiberno English, from Latin Hibernia, Ireland, or Irish English, is the set of English dialects natively written and spoken within the island of Ireland, including both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. English was brought to Ireland as a result of the Norman invasion of Ireland of the late 12th century. Initially, it was mainly spoken in an area known as the Pale around Dublin, with mostly Irish spoken throughout the rest of the country. By the Tudor period, Irish culture and language had regained most of the territory lost to the invaders, even in the Pale, all the common folk. For the most part are of Irish birth, Irish habit, and of Irish language. Some small pockets remain predominantly English-speaking, because of their sheer isolation their dialects developed into later, now extinct, dialects known as Yola in Wexford and Fingalion in Fingal, Dublin. These were no longer mutually intelligible with other English varieties. However, the Tudor conquest and colonization of Ireland in the 16th century marked a forced decline in the use of the Irish language. By the mid 19th century, English was the majority language spoken in the country. It has retained this status to the present day, with even those whose first language is Irish being fluent in English as well. Today, there is only a little more than 1% of the population that speaks Irish natively. English is one of two official languages, along with Irish, of the Republic of Ireland, and is the country's working language. Hiberno English's spelling and pronunciation standards align with British rather than American English. However, Hiberno English's diverse accents and some of its grammatical structures are unique, with some influenced by the Irish language and a tendency to be phonologically conservative, retaining older feature as no longer common in the accents of England or North America. Phonologists today often divide Hiberno English into four or five overarching classes of dialects or accents, Ulster accents, West and Southwest region accents including, for example, the Cork accent, various Dublin accents, and a super-regional accent developing since only the last quarter of the 20th century. Ulster English, or Northern Irish English, here refers collectively to the varieties of the Ulster province, including Northern Ireland and neighboring counties outside of Northern Ireland, which has been influenced by Ulster Irish as well as the Scots language, brought over by Scottish settlers during the plantation of Ulster. Its main subdivisions are Mid-Ulster English, South Ulster English, and Ulster Scots English, the latter of which is more directly and strongly influenced at be the Scots language. All Ulster English has more obvious pronunciation similarities with Scottish English than other Irish English dialects do. Ulster varieties distinctly pronounce. West and Southwest Irish English here refers to broad varieties of Ireland's West and Southwest regions. Accents of both regions are known for. Southwest Irish English, often known by specific county, as Cork English, Kerry English, or Limerick English, also features two major defining characteristics of its own, the raising of to when before or, as in again or pen, and the noticeable intonation pattern of a slightly higher pitch followed by a significant drop in pitch on stressed long vowel syllables, across multiple syllables or even within a single one, which is popularly heard, in rapid conversation, as a kind of undulating sing-song pattern. Dublin English is highly internally diverse and refers collectively to the Irish English varieties immediately surrounding and within the metropolitan area of Dublin. Modern day Dublin English largely lies on a phonological continuum, ranging from a more traditional, lower prestige, local urban accent on the one end to a more recently developing, higher prestige, non local, regional, and even super regional accent on the other end whose most advanced characteristics only first emerged in the late 1980s and 1990s. The accent that most strongly uses the traditional working-class features has been labeled by linguists as local Dublin English. Most speakers from Dublin and its suburbs, however, have accent features falling variously along the entire middle as well as newer end off spectrum, which together form what is called non-local Dublin English, spoken by middle and upper-class natives of Dublin and the greater eastern Irish region surrounding the city. A subset of this variety, whose middle-class speakers mostly range in the middle section of the continuum, is called Mainstream Dublin English. Mainstream Dublin English has become the basis of an accent that has otherwise become super-regional, see more below everywhere except in the north of the country. The majority of Dubliners born since the 1980s, led particularly by females, has shifted towards the most innovative non-local accent, here called New Dublin English which has gained ground over mainstream Dublin English and which is the most extreme variety in rejecting the local accent's traditional features. 
The varieties at either extreme of the spectrum, local and New Dublin English, are both discussed in further detail below. In the most general terms, all varieties of Dublin English have the following identifying sounds that are often distinct from the rest of Ireland, pronouncing. Local Dublin English, or popular Dublin English, here refers to a traditional, broad, working class variety spoken in the Republic of Ireland's capital city of Dublin. It is the only Irish English variety that in earlier history was non rhotic. However, it is today weakly rhotic, and it uniquely pronounces. The local Dublin accent is also known for a phenomenon called vowel breaking, in which the vowel sounds and enclosed syllables are broken into two syllables, approximating and, respectively, evolving as a fashionable outgrowth of the mainstream non-local Dublin English, New Dublin English, also advanced Dublin English and, formerly, Fashionable Dublin English, is a youthful variety that originally began in the early 1990s among the avant-garde and now those aspiring to a non-local urban sophistication. New Dublin English itself, first associated with affluent and middle-class inhabitants of Southside Dublin, is probably now spoken by a majority of Dubliners born since the 1980s. It has replaced, yet was largely influenced by, Moribund D4 English, often known as Dublin 4 or Dart Speak or, mockingly, Dort speak, which originated around the 1970s from Dubliners who rejected traditional notions of Irishness, regarding themselves as more trendy and sophisticated. However, particular aspects of the D4 accent became quickly noticed and ridiculed as sounding affected, causing these features to fall out of fashion by the 1990s. This new mainstream accent of Dublin's youth, rejecting traditional working class Dublin, pronounces super regional Southern Irish English, sometimes simply, superregional Irish English or superregional Hiberno-English, here refers to a variety crossing regional boundaries throughout all of the Republic of Ireland, except the North. As mentioned earlier, mainstream Dublin English of the early to mid-1900s is the direct influence and catalyst for this variety. Most speakers born in the 1980s or later are showing fewer features of the 20th century mainstream superregional form and more characteristics of an advanced superregional variety that aligns clearly with the rapidly spreading New Dublin accent, see more above, under non-local Dublin English. Ireland superregional dialect pronounces. The following charts list the vowels typical of each Irish English dialect as well as the several distinctive consonants of Irish English. Phonological characteristics of overall Irish English are given as well as categorizations into five major divisions of Hiberno English, Northern Ireland, or Ulster, West and Southwest Ireland, Local Dublin, New Dublin, and Superregional, Southern, Ireland. Features of mainstream non local Dublin English fall in a range between Local Dublin and New Dublin. The Defining Monophthongs of Irish English The following pure vowel sounds are defining characteristics of Irish English. All pure vowels of various Hiberno-English dialects. Footnotes in Southside Dublin's once briefly fashionable Dublin 4, or Dort speak, accent, the in broad set becomes rounded as unstressed syllable final or is realized in Ulster accents uniquely as other notes. The Defining Diphthongs of Hiberno-English The following gliding vowel Diphthong, sounds are defining characteristics of Irish English. All diphthongs of various Hiberno-English dialects. Footnotes due to the local Dublin accents phenomenon of vowel breaking, may be realized in that accent as in a closed syllable, and, in the same environment, may be realized as. The defining are colored vowels of Hiberno-English. The following are colored vowel features are defining characteristics of Hiberno-English. All are colored vowels of various Hiberno-English dialects. Footnotes. Every major accent of Irish English is rhotic, pronounces R after a vowel sound. The local Dublin accent is the only one that during an earlier time was non-rhotic, though it usually very lightly rhotic today, with a few minor exceptions. The rhotic consonant in this and most other Irish accents is an approximant. The R sound of the mainstream non-local Dublin accent is more precisely a velarized approximant, while the R sound of the more recently emerging non-local Dublin, or New Dublin, accent is more precisely a retroflex approximant. In Southside Dublin's once briefly fashionable Dublin 4, or Dort speak, accent, is realized as in non-local Dublin's more recently emerging, or New Dublin, accent, and may both be realized more rounded as in local Dublin. West slash Southwest, and other very conservative and traditional Irish English varieties ranging from the South to the North, 
The phoneme is split into two distinct phonemes depending on spelling and preceding consonants, which have sometimes been represented as verses, and often more precisely pronounced as verses. As an example, the words cern and urn are not pronounced the same, as they are in most dialects of English around the world. In the local Dublin and West slash Southwest accents, when after a labial consonant, for example fern, when spelled as er or or, for example word, or when spelled as ear after an alveolar stop, for example dirt, are pronounced as, in all other situations, is pronounced as. Example words include. In non-local Dublin, younger, and super-regional Irish accents, this split is seldom preserved, with both of the phonemes typically merged as. In rare few local Dublin varieties that are non-rhotic, is either lowered to or backed and raised to. The distinction between and is widely preserved in Ireland, so that, for example, horse and horse are not merged in most Irish English dialects, however, they are usually merged in Belfast and New Dublin. In local Dublin, due to the phenomenon of vowel breaking may in fact be realized as the defining consonants of Hiberno-English. The consonants of Hiberno-English mostly align to the typical English consonant sounds. However, a few Irish English consonants have distinctive, varying qualities. The following consonant features are defining characteristics of Hiberno-English. Unique consonants in various Hiberno-English dialects. Footnotes. In traditional, conservative Ulster English, and are palatalized before a low front vowel. Local Dublin also undergoes cluster simplification, so that stop consonant sounds occurring after fricatives or sonorants may be left unpronounced, resulting, for example, in Pundi and Lost T. Roticity, every major accent of Irish English is strongly rhotic, pronounces R after a vowel sound, though to a weaker degree with the local Dublin accent. The accents of local Dublin and some smaller eastern towns like Droida were historically non rhotic and now only very lightly rhotic or variably rhotic with the rhotic consonant being an alveolar approximant. In extremely traditional and conservative accents, exemplified, for instance, in the speech of older speakers throughout the country, even in southwest Ireland, such as Mihol Omur Carde and Jackie Healy Ray, the rhotic consonant, before a vowel sound, can also be an alveolar dap. The rhotic consonant for the Northern Ireland and New Dublin accents is a retroflex approximant. Dublin's retroflex approximant has no precedent outside of Northern Ireland and is a genuine innovation of the past two decades. A guttural slash uvular is found in Northeast Leinster. Otherwise, the rhotic consonant of virtually all other Irish accents is the post alveolar approximant. The symbol, theta, is used here to represent the voiceless alveolar non sibilant fricative, sometimes known as a slit fricative, whose articulation is described as being a pico alveolar. Overall, and are being increasingly merged in super-regional Irish English, for example, making wine and wine homophones, as in most varieties of English around the world. Other phonological characteristics of Irish English include that consonant clusters ending in before are distinctive. The naming of the letter H is H is standard. Due to Gaelic influence, an epithetic schwa is sometimes inserted, perhaps as a feature of older and less careful speakers, for example film and form. A number of Irish language loan words are used in Hiberno English, particularly in an official state capacity. For example, the head of government is the Taoiseach, the deputy head is the Tanaist, the parliament is the Erectus, and its lower house is Doyle Aran. Less formally, people also use loan words in day to day speech, although this has been on the wane in recent decades and among the young. Another group of Hiberno English words are those derived from the Irish language. Some are words in English that have entered into general use, while others are unique to Ireland. These words and phrases are often anglicized versions of words in Irish or direct translations into English. In the latter case, they often give a meaning to a word or phrase that is generally not found in wider English use. Another class of vocabulary found in Hiberno English are words and phrases common in Old and Middle English, but which have since become obscure or obsolete in the modern English language generally. Hiberno English has also developed particular meanings for words that are still in common use in English generally. In addition to the three groups above, there are also additional words and phrases whose origin is disputed or unknown. While this group may not be unique to Ireland, their usage is not widespread, and could be seen as characteristic of the language in Ireland. The syntax of the Irish language is quite different from that of English. Various aspects of Irish syntax have influenced Hiberno English. Though many of these idiosyncrasies are disappearing in suburban areas and among the younger population.
The other major influence on Hiberno-English that sets it apart from modern English in general is the retention of words and phrases from Old and Middle English. Reduplication is an alleged trait of Hiberno-English strongly associated with stage Irish and Hollywood films. Irish lacks words that directly translate as yes or no, and instead repeats the verb used in the question, negated if necessary. To answer. Hiberno English uses yes and no less frequently than other English dialects as speakers can repeat the verb, positively or negatively, instead of, or in redundant addition to, using yes or no. This is not limited only to the verb to be, it is also used with to have when used as an auxiliary, and, with other verbs, the verb to do is used. This is most commonly used for intensification, especially in Ulster English. Irish indicates recency of an action by adding after to the present continuous, a verb ending in ing, a construction known as the hot news perfect or after perfect. The idiom for I had done X when I did Y is I was after doing X when I did Y, modeled on the Irish usage of the compound prepositions in die, tarice, and anice, be me tarice slash and de slash anice ex at enum, nowhere in me y. A similar construction is seen where exclamation is used in describing a recent event. When describing less astonishing or significant events, a structure resembling the German perfect can be seen. This correlates with an analysis of H1 Irish proposed by Adger and Mitrovich, in a deliberate parallel to the status of German as a V2 language. The reflexive version of pronouns is often used for emphasis or to refer indirectly to a particular person, etc., according to context. Herself, for example, might refer to the speaker's boss or to the woman of the house. Use of herself or himself in this way often indicates that the speaker attributes some degree of arrogance or selfishness to the person in question. Note also the indirectness of this construction relative to, for example, she's coming now. There are some language forms that stem from the fact that there is no verb to have in Irish. Instead, possession is indicated in Irish by using the preposition at, in Irish, ag. To be more precise, Irish uses a prepositional pronoun that combines aget and mimi to create a gom. In English, the verb to have is used, along with a with me or on me that derives from ta, agam. This gives rise to the frequent somebody who can speak a language has a language, in which Hiberno-English has borrowed the grammatical form used in Irish. When describing something, many Hiberno-English speakers use the term in it where they would usually be used. This is due to the Irish word an, pronounced tone or on, fulfilling both meanings. Another idiom is this thing or that thing described as this man here or that man there which also features in Newfoundland English and Canada. Conditionals have a greater presence in Hiberno-English due to the tendency to replace the simple present tense with the conditional, would, and the simple past tense with the conditional perfect, would have. Bring and take. Irish use of these words differs from that of British English because it follows the Irish grammar for bear and tug. English usage is determined by the direction, person determines Irish usage. So, in English, one takes from here to there and brings it to here from there. In Irish, a person takes only when accepting a transfer of possession of the object from someone else and a person brings at all other times, irrespective of direction, to or from. The Irish equivalent of the verb to be has two present tenses, one, the present tense proper or aims or lay each, for cases which are generally true or are true at the time of speaking and the other, the habitual present or aims or gnith lay each, for repeated actions. Thus, you are. Now, or generally, is ta to, but you are, repeatedly, is bind to. Both forms are used with the verbal noun, equivalent to the English present participle, to create compound tenses. This is similar to the distinction between ser and estat in Spanish. The corresponding usage in English is frequently found in rural areas, especially Mayo slash Sligo in the west of Ireland and Wexford in the southeast, inner city Dublin along with border areas of the North and Republic. In this form, the verb to be in English is similar to its use in Irish, with a does be slash do be, or bees, although less frequently, construction to indicate the continuous, or habitual, present. This construction also surfaces in African American vernacular English, as the famous habitual be. In old fashioned usage, it is can be freely abbreviated tis, even as a standalone sentence. This also allows the double contraction tisn't, for it is not. Irish has separate forms for the second person singular, to, and the second person plural, sib. 
mirroring Irish, and almost every other Indo-European language, the plural U is also distinguished from the singular in Hiberno-English, normally by use of the otherwise archaic English word he, the word use, sometimes written as use, also occurs, but primarily only in Dublin and across Ulster. In addition, in some areas in Leinster, North Connaught and parts of Ulster, the hybrid word yes, pronounced yes, may be used top the pronunciation differs with that of the Northwestern being and the Leinster pronunciation being. The word ye, yes or use, otherwise archaic, is still used in place of you for the second person plural. Your, yeser or yeser are the possessive forms, for example where are yous going? The verb mitch is very common in Ireland, indicating being true and from school. This word appears in Shakespeare, though he wrote in early modern English rather than Middle English, but is seldom heard these days in British English, although pockets of usage persist in some areas, notably South Wales, Devon, and Cornwall. In parts of Connaught and Ulster the mitch is often replaced by the verb scheme, while in Dublin it is often replaced by on the hop slash bounds. Another usage familiar from Shakespeare is the inclusion of the second person pronoun after the imperative form of a verb, as in wife, go you to her ere you go to bed, Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, Scene 4. This is still common in Ulster, get use your homework done or you're no going out. In Munster, you will still hear children being told, up to bed, let ye. For influence from Scotland, see Ulster Scots and Ulster English. Now is often used at the end of sentences or phrases as a semantically empty word, completing an utterance without contributing any apparent meaning. Examples include by now, equals goodbye, there you go now, when giving someone something, ah now. Expressing dismay, hold on now, equals wait a minute, now then is a mild attention getter, etc. This usage is universal among English dialects, but occurs more frequently in Hiberno English. It is also used in the manner of the Italian prego or German bitta. For example a barman might say now, sir, when delivering drinks, so is often used for emphasis, I can speak Irish, so I can, or it may be tacked on to the end of a sentence to indicate agreement, were then would often be used in standard English, buy so, let's go so, that's fine so, we'll do that so. The word is also used to contradict a negative statement, you're no pushing hard enough, I am so. This contradiction of a negative is also seen in American English, though not as often as I am too, or yes, I am, the practice of indicating emphasis with so and including reduplicating the sentence's subject pronoun and auxiliary verb, is, are, have, has, can, etc., such as in the initial example, is particularly prevalent in more northern dialects such as those of Sligo, Mayo and the counties of Ulster. Sure is often used as a tag word, emphasizing the obviousness of the statement, roughly translating as but slash and slash well dot can be used as to be sure, the famous Irish stereotype phrase. But note that the other stereotype of sure and, is not actually used in Ireland, or sure, I can just go on Wednesday, I will not, to be sure. The word is also used at the end of sentences, primarily in Munster, for instance I was only here five minutes ago, sure and can express emphasis or indignation. Two is often omitted from sentences where it would exist in British English. For example, I'm not let go out tonight, instead of I'm not allowed to go out tonight. Will is often used where British English would use shall or American English should, as in will I make us a cup of tea? The distinction between shall, for first person simple future, and second and third person emphatic future, and will, second and third person simple future. First person emphatic future, maintained by many in England, does not exist in Hiberno English, with will generally used in all cases. Once is sometimes used in a different way from how it is used in other dialects, in this usage, it indicates a combination of logical and causal conditionality, I have no problem laughing at myself once the joke is funny. Other dialects of English would probably use it in this situation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.